Okay, good morning. good morning. Yes, we're back here from yesterday, and here's my sermon title for today. What does it say, everybody? No, no, no. Okay, what does that word say? Yes. Okay, so I think some of you might feel like uh, younger grades. What does that word mean? <laughs> what is that? That looks so long, and it's the fun too, I think. It just says, nevertheless, Give thanks. And it's from Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. So you'll find out more about what that means. Now, yesterday we celebrated uh, the day as Thanksgiving Day, right? And in the United States, it's the date's a little bit different every year because it's the fourth Thursday in November every year. And why Turkey? Some students, like in uh, younger grades, they ask me, why Turkey? And anybody knows? Oh, I said younger grade and they know. Okay, Brandon, why Turkey? Uh, long time ago, the United States or some countries or to another country to eat food and then that they were Indian tribes and they... Ah, you're giving us the first Thanksgiving history. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so that is the theory that we know and that the schools teach. And I was looking through many, you know, information on the internet and they say that is the first Thanksgiving story that we are taught. And then also it could be the, the reason might be because there are many turkeys they had <laughs> and it was big enough for a family to have. So there are many reasons behind it. But anyway, somehow we just have picture of turkey. Yeah, in Korea, we don't really eat turkey as much. We eat chicken a lot. But anyways, so that's Thanksgiving Day. Um, and so we want to talk about Thanksgiving. And I was wondering what or who and or who you are thankful for. So there are too many of you to ask. I can just have maybe six people. You can raise hand and tell me what you're thankful for. Yes, Shiho. Snack, yes. Wonderful. Hannah. Mom and dad. Mom and dad, of course. Lucas. My home. Your home. home, your house, your home. Yes, gone. Game. Game, yes. <laughs> she. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> yes, Daniel back. Jesus. Money. Oh, Jesus, she says. Money. Money. Okay, <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yes, James. All your families. Okay, did I already? Uh, that was six people, I think. Oh, that's very similar to what I thought you will say. Okay, so family, of course. Everybody will say, I'm so thankful for my family. Even though older ones didn't say anything, I know inside your heart you're already thinking this, right? Your mom, dad, grandparents, and your siblings, everybody. Maybe you will say, not my sibling, but you are thankful. <laughs> and friends, of course, right? And school teachers. Nobody said that, okay, but yes, food, water, somebody said snack, yes, we're so thankful for all the food that we eat, water, drink, drinks that we have, computer, tablet, PC, phone, games, I knew somebody was going to say that, and my class actually said, I'm thankful for my birthday, they, they, we like thank God for our birthday like two months before, <laughs> and then we're thankful for Christmas, we're thankful for clothes that we wear. I mean, I'm glad you're all wearing something today. <laughs> We're thankful for house, our homes, and Jesus, of course, yes. There are so many things that we are thankful for. And we say, Thanksgiving Day, you have to thank, be thankful, be grateful, say thank you, okay? And that is, that is true because God says in the Bible, there are many passages in the Bible that says, give thanks, you have to be thankful for. And let's have uh, first, second, third grade read this. Ready, go. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Yes. <laughs> and then fourth, fifth grade read this. Ready, go. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. And then let's have everyone else read this. Ready, go. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Amen. So, of course, there are many more passages that we can find in the Bible. If you just search thanksgiving, thanks, then you will find many, many passages. That's because God says, give thanks give thanks, right? So that's, of course, that's what our God said. But I, instead of just saying give thanks, I put one more word, right? Nevertheless. 
And what does that mean? And it's from Habakkuk. How many of you know the book of Habakkuk from the Bible? Kind of, of not many, okay? Okay, first of all, what's nevertheless? What does that word mean? Did you guys ever use this word in your writing or in your speaking? Maybe older students? Nope. Yeah, 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 the elementary is going, no, uh, uh. <laughs> Okay, it just means, it's similar to however, like, like even so, right? So in the dictionary it says, in spite of that, however, so how do we use it? Maybe something like this. Bruno was tired after a long day at school. Nevertheless, he finished his homework before playing outside. Something like that, right? So this is like how we use nevertheless, right? So what, what's the second uh, sentence that we can think of? It was raining outside. Nevertheless, we decided to play a fun game indoors. So it's kind of like however, right? And the last one says, Rose felt nervous about her presentation. Nevertheless. She stood up and spoke confidently to the class. So it's opposite of what's happening in the first phrase of the sentence, right? So even though this might be the truth uh, of what's happening, nevertheless, however, in spite of that, something else happened, right? So why do we talk about that? And Habakkuk is a book, and I will read that, we'll read that again, but let me actually, oops, where did I put that? Yes. This is where the Habakkuk is. So we look at all of these books in the Old Testament. How many books are there in the Old Testament? Who knows? Shiu. Ooh, ooh. In the Old Testament. Good, good try. Yes, 66 in the whole book of the Bible. Shiu. In the Old Testament, how many books do you know? 100. 100. Too many. Daniel. Yeah. yeah. Friend. Nobody from the, the back. Come on. <laughs> is this only for elementary? Yes, Chase. 39, very close. Oh, yes, you're right. What am I thinking? 39, yes, 39. How I memorize it is 3 times 9 is 27. So altogether 66. And Old Testament, 39. And New Testament, 27. But anyway, so 39. And it's at the end, almost at the end of the Old Testament is Habakkuk. And in Korean, Habakkuk. And uh, it's a, it's a uh, prophet. Okay, I will go back to that again. But... Um, uh, Okay, this is the passage, okay? So let's have an uh, older group, uh, high school read the uh, verse 17. Ready, go. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, thank you. And the middle school, num uh, verse 18, ready, go. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Yes, and 19 elementary. Ready, go. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Amen. So actually, when I was younger, like your age, elementary age, we always sang this song. Whenever I hear this passage, I remember of this song. And whenever I see buhaga, which is fig, many kids don't know what fig is. I once brought it as a snack and she was like, what is that? And he tried it and he loved it. So that's fig is buhaga. And it's a, it's a fruit and it's, a, it's a growing from a tree. And I, I will quickly sing this song. How many of you know this song? And I, I found out that Marcus Worship, they also uh, connected this song with the other song. Yeah, many of you know it. So we'll just acapella. We'll see it quick. One, two, three, and one, two, go. Muhaga na mu ipi marigo, poto yalme ga opsimya. Tam nam nam mu yalme kichigo, numbate shing muri opsado. Uri e yang te ga opsimyo, we yang kan songa ji opsado. Nan ya ho a ro chigo wa hari. Nan ya ho a ro chigo wa hari. Nan ku wa ne ha na ni me in he. Yeah, maybe you heard it somewhere, maybe you sang it at church. But anyways, this was a song that I sang since I was young. And, and it just still, whenever I see buhaga, fig, this is the song. <laughs> it's just, it's just, just uh, automatic. And we had dances. I think I even taught this in China when I was like uh, teaching songs, praise songs to some Chinese churches. 
And because it, it, that's how much I love this song and how much I love this passage. Because in uh, Habakkuk, this prophet, out of many prophets, and many prophets actually in the Bible, minor prophets, they do talk about how God, they, they you know, ask God. And of course, God gives them message. And you guys know prof what prophet is, right? Prophet is a person in the Bible who gives words to people. Because in the Old Testament, Jesus didn't come yet. So they didn't talk to God in person. They couldn't do that. So then prophets will come and say, this is God's message. You know, and usually it's the message of punishment, but at the same time, after the punishment, they always say, but God is gracious, right? And Habakkuk was complaining. If you get a chance, it's only three chapters. It's not much, so you can read it at home, right? And he says, like, why, God, are you letting these people sin like this? They are so violent. They are doing such bad things. Why are you just letting them be? And he was talking about not people who are not Christian, but he was, he was talking about Israelites like people of Judah, who were God's people, Jews, right? And he was so angry because they were not following God's word and they were not obeying, they were sinning. And God, you're good, you're righteous. Why aren't you doing anything? And then in the second chapter, he says, I will then use people of not God, uh, uh, Babylonians, to uh, punish them. And then Habakkuk gets angry again. What do you mean? Why are you using those even more wicked people to punish your own people? And he's just keep on talking with God. And God says, I love my people and I need to teach them the right way, right? And then actually the Habakkuk ends with the passage that you just read. Of course he wasn't singing, but that's how he said at the end of this passage, how, how even if we are in this very hard situation, even if we don't have all of these things, um, just like the passage says when we go back to that passage, uh, okay, even if we don't have a fig on the tree, right? And there are no grapes on the vines, there are, uh, olive crop fails. So that means it, 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 it just means there's nothing. No animal, no fruit, no crops, nothing. There's nothing. But still, yet, meaning nevertheless, I will be happy. Nevertheless, I'll be joyful. Nevertheless, I'll be thankful. And that is what Habakkuk is saying in this Bible passage. And um, it is very hard to say that, actually. Uh, in this world right now, of course, we don't really have to look for figs. You don't have to only eat figs, right? But there are many other fruit, many other food. As you guys said, we have wonderful snack, right? Um, and there are some challenging tests that's coming up your way. What? And there are some conflicts that might be happening in your friendship or even with your siblings or even with your parents. There are many things that's happening in our lives right now that you feel like it is not matching with what we just read, but we also have some things that happen that we, you feel like we do have many things to be thankful for, but at the same time there's so many things that's happening around us that you feel like, how can we be thankful, Lord? God, please, what do you mean? You're so righteous. Why is this happening in this world right now? Or why is this happening to me right now? You know, we can ask God that, those questions. And there are wars going on. You all know that, right? And I talk about this to my first, second grade, and they're scared. What? What do you mean? And there are wars happening right now. Even our country, a lot of people from outside feel like South Korea is not a safe place. We, you all know, right? You read the news, and North Korea is sending all these balloons and... There are so many things happening, and even I don't, you know, I, I don't talk about politics, but you know, right in right now in Korea, there are many things happening. If you are reading news, right, about the president, and there's so many things, right, and nothing seems settled, nothing seems peaceful, right now in Juniper Christian School, we we feel peace, but just out the door, there are so many things happening, right, and and that is what's happening in this world. And when all these things are happening still, we say, nevertheless, we'll be thankful. Nevertheless, we'll be giving thanks to our Lord, our God, because he's good, loving, and strong. But that's not the end. Oops. That's not the end, but it's not there. I just updated it, but too late. Okay. That is not the end, because it's not one-sided. 
you know, when we say, oh, okay, even though that's all happening, nevertheless, I'll give thanks. So this is what I do. Then what about God? Of course, he says, nevertheless, even if you sin, even if you make conflicts, even if you fail your test, even if you're afraid of all these things that's happening in your life, even if you want to give up and say, I want to die, I don't want this anymore. Even if you say that, God is so good and loving and caring and he's strong and gracious, he will say, nevertheless, I love you. I care for you. So you trust me. That is what God is saying. When we say nevertheless give thanks, I don't just mean, oh, that's just what we do because we are sinful, because we are God's people. We just have to follow him and that's it. And of course that is true. Nothing's wrong with that. But I'm saying it's the relationship we have with our God. When we say give thanks, because even if you don't have tablet PC, even if you don't have phone, even if you are so sick, even if you are not doing so well in class, I don't know. Maybe you don't have a lot of friends. Maybe you're not as popular as someone else. Doesn't matter. You can give thanks to God because God says, I'm the one who loves you and who knows you all the way into your heart. Yeah. So we can all say, nevertheless, give thanks. Okay, let's pray. <laughs>